Hello, I'm Calvin Morris and I'm here today to talk to you about another top 5 list and this time it's my top 5 episodes of Knight Rider. Um, not the spin-offs, the original 1980s show starring David Hasselhoff. Now the show ran from 1982 to 1986 and a total of 90 episodes. Some argue 85 but I don't count the two parters as one. I count them as individual episodes and therefore 90 and that's something that my buttocks will testify to. Uh, I grew up watching Knight Rider and I've, I've enjoyed the show. I had it on VHS, I've now got it on DVD. Um, I, I enjoy watching the odd episode here or there but this is the first time uh, when I decided to do this video it's the first time I ever done a Night Rider marathon and watched every single episode back to back. Uh, any opportunity I've had, so I've gone through every single episode to bring in this top five. Um, before I get to my top five list, let's do a quick brief of the show. Uh, as I said, the show began in 1982 and was conceived by Glenn Larson, uh, a man who was previously responsible for such shows as Quincy Me and Battlestar Galactica. Um, it was when Knight Rider came on the scene though that really uh, Glenn Larson came in for a lot of criticism. Um, mainly because other shows that he had worked on had just been compared to there were small screen knockoffs of big screen blockbusters. So other shows such as uh, Alias Smith and Jones were compared to Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Uh, Battlestar Galactica was compared to Star Wars. Um, BJ and the Bear was compared to Any Which Way But Loose and of course Knight Rider comes along and is immediately paralleled with James Bond. Uh, of course that really was what Glenn Larson was offering, was an Americanized network television show that had a similar sort of theme and was you could argue that Glenn Larson was plagiarizing things uh, such as you know Hooper uh, to the Fall Guy um, you could argue that what he was really doing was giving the audience more of what they wanted. Um, and, you know, there's an argument to be made for both, and I'm not going to get mixed up in the politics of this. Uh, but I would just say that when Knight Rider came along, uh, you could immediately draw certain parallels. Uh, James Bond and Michael Knight share a similar sort of background, in that they were both mil former military and recruited out, out of the military. Uh, Michael Knight, obviously, when he was Michael Long, was a Green Beret working counterintelligence in Vietnam, um, which he, he left, went to a uh, civilian job as a police officer, and there, from there he was recruited into the Foundation for Law and Government. Uh, so yeah, there are plenty of parallels to be drawn, but never mind about that, let's get on. Now, after watching 90 episodes of Knight Rider, I've established that most of the storytelling falls into four major categories. The first is that they have to stop a terrorist before it escalates into an international incident. Another is that they have to help out a small town or an individual against localized bullies. Uh, another is that uh, something has either happened to Michael Kitt or a member of the foundation. And finally, uh, somebody wants revenge against Michael Kitt or a member of the foundation. That tends to be the four major themes that run throughout the entire show. And uh, overall, I would have said that what they done with the series was to uh, use these story elements very well. It didn't always work, and you get story elements and stories that are a little bit, some are better than others. But overall, when you consider that what they were making was an action TV show on a network budget, um, I think, you know, most of the time you can forgive you know, the, the the cheesiness, the campness of the TV show. And what we are left with then is Knight Rider, a shadowy flight into the dangerous world of a man who does not exist, and Michael Knight, a young loner on a crusade to champion the cause of the innocent, the helpless, the powerless, in a world of criminals who operate above the law. And I'm going to tell you straight off, um, compiling a list of five episodes, because really and truly, there wasn't one or two episodes that really jutted out. They're all of a particular quality, some are better than others. Um, I've made my list and I took episodes out and put episodes back in and the list was really, it took me a long time to compile a list of five episodes. Uh, two of the episodes I'm gonna mention right now, which are two episodes I think are worth checking out. 
Um, but they're not going to make my top five, and that is the season four episode Night Sting, uh, which is very much an Ocean's Eleven type of story, where uh, essentially they they work as a team and they go after a, a particular criminal, and they they sort of proactive about it. They actually they actually sort of head them off as the pass, as it were. They they intercept and decided again they're very proactive in this episode. Um, it's it's pretty good. It, it almost made the list. Didn't quite. Reason why is because the musical score in this episode is horrible. It's sort of Bugsy Malone. It's really annoying and it just repeats throughout the episode. And I, if it wasn't for that, I would have probably it would have probably made the list. Um, another episode is Knights of the Fast Lane, where uh, Michael is actually uh, got. He's got to go back to. Uh, meet his and um, work with his former police partner Jim Courtney. Um, it's a really good story about about how his former partner's daughter uh, is involved in a hit and run, and um, he's trying to help her out, and he's trying to. It's going back into Michael's past, and it's a it's a pretty solid story. And then at the end of the episode, they cock it right up. I mean, they totally cock it up. I would have put it into the list if it weren't for the fact that they have Kit playing NFL American football. I uh, I am not making it up. It, it, not only does he score a touchdown, but he turbo boosts over the posts to convert. I mean, seriously. You watch the episode and it's just like, why would you do that? This was good. This was really good. So it's it's it's, it's an episode worth checking out. Knights of the Fast Lane, but they yeah they cock it up. Anyway, that's all that. Let's get on to the top five episodes of Knight Rider, and I'm going to start off with my number five episode, which is Knight of the Phoenix. Now this is obviously the first episode of Knight Rider and is the origin story. Uh, I think it's a, a brilliant uh, origin story. I think it, it does it really well. Uh, I think it introduces all the elements to Knight Rider um, throughout the story and is done really sort of seamlessly. Um, none of the elements seem really forced. Um, I think it's good relationship building because obviously at the start uh, Devon and Michael really butt heads and they don't get on and it's the same with you know, when he discovers Kit and uh, the relationship between those two. Uh, it builds throughout and there's a certain amount of trust in, it, in the relationship being built. Um, obviously it's a story of rebirth and revenge. Um, I think it's handled superbly. Uh, it's on my number five. I would have put it further up the list, but when I thought about it, it was like, I can't quite put it further up the list because they had a lot more time, they had a lot more budget. Um, so they, they, they were able to work harder on the pilot than there are any other episode. so it, it makes the list but it's it, number five uh, for those reasons. The standout uh, of Night of the Phoenix for me is the musical score by Stu Phillips. Um, the musical score to this is incredible. It is, it is brilliant. Um, what Stu Phillips does, and again, he has a bigger budget and he's allowed to work with a band, so what you end up with is a musical score that is uh, comprised of intensity, drama, intrigue, pace. It, it, it adds a sense of urgency to the visuals on the screen. Uh, without the musical score, what you're seeing is you know, a lot of people walking fast and people driving cars recklessly. but what the musical score does is it it combines with very well with the visuals on the screen and it helps elevate what we are seeing um it's a brilliant i i, I you know it's pitch perfect uh, what what he, what Stu Phillips does with the musical score to this episode of Night Rider is probably the best work he's ever done um and just as an example of that just watch the scene where Michael is heading towards the airport to stop Tanya from getting on the aeroplane. Uh, you know, the whole bit with the trucks. <clears throat> um, that entire run, that entire build is 
probably one of my favourite scores. Um, in fact, what I'll do, I'll put the link in the description to that piece of music. It's five minutes long. Um, it really kicks in at about three minutes forty, but it's building and building and building. And when it hits, you get a lot of horns and you get a lot of strings, and it's it's just glorious. I think it's it's my favorite one of my favorite pieces of music um, from Night Rider, and it's one of my favorite pieces of music regardless. Anyway, I think it, it's a bloody good job. Uh, so that's my number five pick, and that's Night of the Phoenix. In at number four, it's the season four episode, Sky Knight. Um, this episode, for me, uh, is, a, is an incredible lot of fun. Uh, it's a big idea, it's a big story done in 42 minutes. Uh, it's a story of a former military officer in Charles Zurich, who uh, uses a lot of distraction techniques to hijack uh, an airplane so that he can uh, gain access to a place called, I think it's called Deep Sleep. Um, he also then uses the hijackers because he wants, I think it's 196 people released from prison that he can put together and form his own sort of terrorist cell army. Uh, the character of Charles Zurich is a bit morally obtuse and isn't, um, he's, he's not really a well-rounded villain in that he is just he was a good guy that is snapped and he's now just a maniac with a blatant disregard for human life. Um, if I had to compare this story to anything, I would say this story is pretty much The Rock. I mean, if you if you watch the movie The Rock and you watch this episode, you're kind of watching the same sort of story. Uh, I think it's done really, really well and considering it is done on a uh, TV budget, I think they really do deliver. Um, though there are a couple of shots that are a bit, mm -mm, you know, but uh, <laughs> like I said, 80s TV show, it's got a bit of, a bit of cheese with it, it's a bit camp, and um, but I, I, I think overall it does deliver. And that's my number four, and that's Sky Knight. In at number three, it is Kit versus Car. Oh yes. Oh yes. The doppelganger story. Um, Kit versus Car. Look, the one thing that Knight Rider really doesn't have is a nemesis. You know, James Bond has Blofeld, and uh, Knight Rider really doesn't have another nemesis. And when they introduce Car in the first season in Trust Don't Rust, uh, it was it was kind of interesting. You know, it was like you know, use a character in car that was on equal foot into kit and that sort of that, that leveled the playing field and that made it quite interesting so when they brought back car for season three yeah it was a, it was a bit of a holy crap moment you know this is this is car he's back and he's pissed and um it's a it's not a sensible story by any stretch of the imagination it's a silly bit of fun, but um, what makes this episode really good is how serious the characters are taking it. Um, you know, when when they when they talk about car, there's a sense of you don't understand the dangers of this vehicle. You don't understand how dangerous car can be, and the sense of of urgency to to resolve the situation, and they keep iterating it over and over and over. Uh, and particularly from Michael, who, having worked with Kit for so long, really does understand what an evil version of Kit really is. Um, so, uh, it's, it's, again, it's a lot of fun. It's, a, it's really, you know, it is a, there's a big block of cheese being backed in on a wagon. Um, but it's, it's an incredible amount of entertainment. And that's my number three. And my number two... It's another season four episode, which is surprising because not, season four really doesn't deliver many good episodes. Um, but it is Night of the Juggernaut, and uh, Night of the Juggernaut, uh, the two-parter. Um, I I I enjoy this episode. I can't lie. I I can't. It's it's really over the top. It's a real big story. Um, 
it introduces the character of Reginald Cornelius III, otherwise known as RC3, or RC. Why anybody would want to be called RC, I don't know. RC? RC? You wouldn't want to be called RC unless you had a serious bum fetish. Um, you, you call him Reg. You know, just just call him Reg. And they introduce him as the Street Avenger. Ugh. Oh, good grief. But, but, the story is really, really good. The Foundation is under threat from being disbanded. Michael Knight has been suspended. Devin Miles has been replaced by a lookalike. Um, you know, people have been sent on their merry way. And it's up to Michael. You know, Kit has been destroyed. So it's up to Michael to put the band back together in secret to take on the forces that are working against them. Um, it was only after a, a long time of thinking about this episode that I realised I've kind of seen this story before and recently. And um, I took a lot of time thinking about it and it suddenly dawned on me that what Night of the Juggernaut really was, was an 80s version of Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. And yeah, yeah, the meat is different to the to the the episode, but the bones of the story are exactly the same, and it makes it you know, in spite of all, you know, the eighties uh, fun stuff that they throw into the episode, um, it does make for a really good story, and. When they, you know, I don't like the part where they put Kit back together using a, a pit crew from the block and, and things like that. I think Kit should be a bit more sophisticated than being able to just put him together. Uh, but that being said, I still love this episode. I still think it's a tremendous amount of fun and uh, that's why it makes my number two. And now we come to my number one pick of Knight Rider and it is the episode... Goliath part one and two uh, Once again, it's another doppelganger story that delves more into the background of Wilton Knight and his history and his family um, It deals with the fact that Elizabeth Knight and Garth Knight are You know are around they are they are you know, it, it's a, a mother who um, Loves her son who is trying to get her son out of prison um Turns out that he looks exactly like Michael Knight. Um, and then you find out then that Michael's face was actually based on Garth. Um, it's, again, it's a little bit ridiculous, but um, Garth then wants revenge for what has happened to him on the Foundation. Um, you know, as far as he was concerned, his father abandoned him and left him to serve three consecutive life sentences in an African prison. Um, his mother obviously uh, still loves his, still loves her son, and she will do anything to, to sort of see that he succeeds. He sees Michael Knight as an abomination and an affront to his being, um, and he uh, gets the, um, the molecularly bonded shell so he can build Goliath, and. Uh, do what he intends to do, which is to uh, crash through the gates and the walls of Red Bluff and steal some high-powered missiles. Now, it doesn't all make sense, this story, but I really, really enjoy it. Um, I, think it's a, I think it's a really good, fun, big episode of Knight Rider. Um, I think that, uh, yeah, okay, it's just another doppelganger plot and it's a revenge plot, but I think it uh, backfills some of the extra story of Knight Rider and it also lends credence to the fact that Wilton Knight, whilst being a genius, might have been a little bit more twisted than what we first thought, you know, um, and that the Knight family is just a mess. It is completely screwed up and uh, is, a, is a bigger mess of a family than we previously thought. They're not just this clean-cut family that uh, have this good purpose 
and it, it also lends credit to the fact then that what Wilton might try to do with the Foundation for Law and Government was make up for past indiscretions. So uh, that's my top five list. Uh, it is Knight of the Phoenix, Sky Knight, Kit vs. Car, Knight of the Juggernaut and Goliath. Uh, like I said, I wrestled over this list. I went back and forth over and over and over. Pulled episodes in, took episodes out. I reshuffled the list, reshuffled the order. Um, but there it is. And that's where I'm going to leave that. So, if you've enjoyed this episode, feel free to like, comment and subscribe to this channel. Go over and join me on Google+. But until next time, I'll see you later, guys.